they say pilots talk. And when they do, it's never random. In hangars, in flight briefings, over black coffee at 4 a.m., that's where you hear the truth. And lately, inside Canada's air bases, there's one aircraft they can't stop whispering about. A jet that isn't American, isn't stealth, and isn't supposed to compete with a fifth-generation monster like the F-35. Yet somehow, it's earned their respect. It's Sweden's Saab Gripen E. And after what it just did, Canadian pilots are wondering if their country chose the wrong jet. For decades, Canada has lived in the shadow of two giants, geography and alliance, a nation stretching from the Pacific to the Atlantic with frozen Arctic skies that eat metal and freeze fuel, and an ally, the United States, whose military machine defines Western air power. When Ottawa decided to replace its aging CF-18 Hornets, the outcome seemed inevitable. The F-35, the world's most advanced fighter, would win. Billions were already invested. It was NATO's crown jewel. But deep inside the Royal Canadian Air Force, there were quiet doubts. Not about technology, about fit. Could a jet built for global power projection survive the raw, brutal conditions of Canada's Arctic patrols? Could it land on short, icy runways hundreds of miles from the nearest base? Could it defend sovereignty without a small army of U.S. contractors and logistics behind it? That's where Sweden entered the story, a country smaller than many Canadian provinces. No stealth obsession, no trillion-dollar budget. Just a promise. We'll give you control, not dependence. And for a brief, electric moment, that offer made Canada pause. When Saab offered the Gripen E, most experts laughed. How could a small Swedish jet compete with the F-35? It wasn't stealth. It wasn't hypersonic. And it didn't need a 400-page maintenance manual just to start the engine. Critics called it a poor man's fighter. But pilots saw something else. They saw freedom in a machine designed to survive without a superpower's shadow. Gripen could take off from a highway, refuel from a truck, be serviced by a team of six mechanics with a toolbox and a laptop. And it could do it all in sub-zero weather, the kind of weather Canada calls Tuesday. Still, politics is a powerful force. The United States lobbied hard. Lockheed Martin made its case. The F-35 had allies, momentum, and the word stealth stamped on its soul. Sweden only had logic and pilots listening. Then came the test that changed everything. An interoperability demo. Gripen E versus a simulated Arctic mission profile. The challenge was simple. Survive and complete the mission under extreme conditions, with limited logistics support. For most modern jets, that means a nightmare, because they're built for bases, not survival. Gripen didn't just survive, it thrived. Cold weather startup, instant. Snow-covered strip, no problem. Systems check in under 10 minutes. While the F-35's onboard diagnostics still scrolled through their pre-flight status lines, Canadian observers watched, almost in disbelief. Here was a jet that acted like it belonged there, in their environment, on their turf. No giant maintenance shelters, no delicate stealth coatings to babysit. It was lean, efficient, relentless. And when the test expanded into simulated engagements, Gripen E proved something else. Situational awareness that rivaled the F-35 without ever revealing itself. Its electronic warfare suite, the Arexis system, jammed, spoofed, and confused radar networks built to track stealth aircraft. As one RCAF test officer put it later, it didn't just play the game, it rewrote the rules. By the end of that demo, whispers had already begun spreading across the hangar floor. Pilots don't talk politics, they talk performance. And what they saw that week was performance. Griepen wasn't pretending to be invisible. It was being unpredictable. It didn't hide from radar. It danced around it. It didn't demand perfection. It thrived in imperfection. And that, to a Canadian pilot, is the mark of a real combat jet. In Arctic patrols, there are no second chances. Engines freeze, GPS signals fail. You rely on instinct, adaptability, and a jet that doesn't quit. Gripen E embodied that mindset. 
Not the biggest, not the fastest, but the most independent. That word, independence, hit a nerve. Because Canada's defense story has always been one of partnership, sometimes at the cost of autonomy. The F-35, for all its power, comes with layers of control, software access, upgrade permissions, U.S. oversight. Saab's pitch was simple. You buy it, you own it. Full source codes, full control. No one else offered that, not even close. Of course, Ottawa eventually chose the F-35. It was the politically safe move, align with allies, share technology, maintain the status quo. But inside Canadian airbases, the conversation didn't die. If anything, it got louder. Pilots started comparing data, simulations, mission reports, and what they found kept the Gripen legend alive. Because when Sweden offered Gripen to Canada, it wasn't just a jet they were selling. It was a vision of sovereignty, a jet that didn't need to phone home for permission, a jet that could operate from anywhere, under any condition, a jet that gave the pilot, not the politics, the final say. That idea has started to resonate again, especially as Canada faces the realities of Arctic defense, melting ice routes, increased Russian activity, and the challenge of patrolling one of the harshest airspaces on Earth. The F-35 is unmatched in its technology, but its reliance on global supply chains and complex logistics could become a weakness up north. Gripen, on the other hand, was practically born for isolation. And that's why, even after the contracts were signed and the ink dried, the whispers continued. Because pilots know what bureaucrats often forget, in real combat, it's not the fanciest jet that wins. It's the one that keeps flying. So, what are those whispers really saying? They're not rebellion, they're respect for a small Nordic jet that punched far above its weight, for a country that built not the most expensive, but perhaps the most intelligent aircraft on Earth. Sweden's Gripen didn't win Canada's contract, but it may have won something deeper, the admiration of those who truly understand the sky. And maybe, just maybe, the next time Canada looks to the north and sees the storms gathering, they'll remember the jet that didn't need perfect conditions to perform miracles. Because in the end, it's not about who builds the biggest machine, it's about who builds the right one. And as pilots in Canada quietly admit, Sweden just might have done exactly that. In a sky full of giants, it's the smallest that earns the loudest respect.